Back in 2014, Harley Davidson launched this, the Street 750. This was a new beginning for Harley Davidson, trying to tap into new markets globally, and they somewhat succeeded for a bit. There were cases of early bikes suffering from brake failures, which was one of the reasons the Street 750's reputation turned to the worse. The build quality was not up to Harley standards, and the MRF tyres that came as standard weren't that grippy, and some of the bikes even suffered from electrical issues. Well, after shitting on the bike, I can still say that it was successful because it did have quite a lot of things going for it. One being this liquid-cooled V-twin engine called the Revolution X, built here in Bawal, and it was filled with torque, dollops of torque down for the city, and huge amounts of power, enough for the highway. You could do 130, 140, and this bike felt rock solid. Once you swing your leg around the Harley Davidson Street 750, you do realize how low of a bike this is. The seat is pretty wide and comfortable, and the compound on it is perfect for long rides. The handlebars are pretty upright and your back also sits pretty upright. However, the mid-mounted foot pegs are a bit of an oddball and I would have preferred my foot pegs to be a little closer to the radiator. However, you gotta deal with it. And the pillion seat is pretty much non-existent, but who cares? But the days of the Street 750 reigning over the middleweight cruiser category faded away because of another twin. A parallel twin that dethroned the king of the streets, the Interceptor 650. Ever since its launch in 2018, the Interceptor 650 has been the steed of choice in the middleweight cruiser segment. And again, it was the animal's heartbeat that captivated the buyer's interest. When it comes to pricing, the Interceptor 650 can be yours new for a smidge over 3 lakhs almost anywhere in our country. 3 lakhs for a parallel twin 650cc bike. If you ask me, that's a steal. And it's not like you're getting some metal scaffolding welded onto a, some engine. It's actually very well built, which makes it an even more surprising feat. The 648cc air and oil cool parallel twin complements the Interceptor perfectly. You can potter around at low revs and the Interceptor will be more than happy to do so. But whack the throttle open and that's where the bike turns from thumper to sprinter. The Interceptor will propel you rather quickly from as low as 3500 rpm all the way up to 7000 rpm. The Bybre brakes in the front and rear have a great bike and are capable of shaving speed efficiently enough. The Street 750 we had on the shoot of course was modified a little. It had gotten an aftermarket exhaust and it made all of the American cruiser bike sounds you wanted. But riding the bike was a task in itself. The bike we had was one of the early models which suffered from the braking issue. The brakes lock up randomly and it doesn't matter if you're doing 40 km an hour or 140 km an hour. And when they lock up, pray for your life that you don't slip and fall because of the unorthodox riding positions. Since the foot pegs are so far back, your back and hands start to pain but the upside of the whole experience is the wonderful engine hugely powerful and loads of torque. Any gear, any RPM, it just picks up and goes. The Interceptor looks like a timeless machine. The big bulging tank and the thin seat, which actually is not that comfortable, makes it look like it's from a different era. The dual exhaust and the chrome finishing gives it that old school retro look except that it's an all new motorcycle and it has been sailed for only 2 years now. And if you want an even more prettier version, you can get the Continental 650 which is a retro cafe racer take on the same platform. 
The Harley has been accused of looking like a Bajaj Avenger or the Avenger has been accused of looking like a Street 750. Either way, it's not a good image for Harley. Yes, the Harley does look like a more traditional take on what a cruiser bike should be, but you can clearly see the build quality, or dare I say the lack of it. All of these events in Harley's life in India have led them to exit the Indian market, except there is a glimmer of hope. Hero has recently announced that they will be joining forces with Harley Davidson in India to create higher quality, reasonable price bikes, especially engineered to appeal the Indian consumer. The Interceptor 650's character can very easily mask that this is a cut price parallel twin. It's pretty much the cheapest of its sort all over the world. However, I still think that this is the most apt bike for India. It takes bumpy and pimply roads with amazing ease. It's a banger of a ride. And the best thing, it munches miles super easily. Today, we had the Street 750 for you guys, just to keep it as a benchmark and show you how far the Interceptor 650 has come from its competition, which was four years old. However, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have had this. Thank you so much for watching. This is your boy Bhavneet. See you in the next one.